Hi everyone, this is Denise from Creates with Love and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to go over a couple things. I'm going to try to keep it nice and brief, but first of all, Cricut once again improved their sharing project feature. So I want to briefly go over the little changes that they made that made it easier for us to share our projects and they also added how to share your Cricut profile with others, which is really a unique idea. I also, with the COVID and everything going on, it's probably better to visit family and friends outside at a distance. So I went ahead and designed a sign that says, Thanksgiving on the patio, six turkeys apart, hashtag grateful. And I also made one for Friendsgiving. I can share my sign in Design Space with you and also free printables for those who do not have a Cricut. That way everyone can make a sign. And then in addition, I got an email question from one of my lovely viewers and she says this. She says, hi Denise, thank you so much for allowing video suggestions. Can you show me how you apply permanent vinyl to light 65 pound cardstock? My cardstock tears every time I remove the transfer tape or I can't get the vinyl to stick. Ugh. I think that's what UGH means. Ugh. Thanks so much for your time, Clara. So Clara, I am going to not only answer your question, but show you how I do it in this file that I'm going to share. So you could even practice with the file if you like, if you guys are having Thanksgiving on the patio this year or Friendsgiving on the patio, I give you both options for this file. So let me go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so to quickly go over some of the sharing features they did, one of the things they did was they changed their default privacy settings. So basically, let's take this project as an example. This is the project we're going to be working on today. And if I go ahead and click on share, I have a copy project link or I have a Facebook or a Pinterest to share it, okay? So before they had project link was the default setting was to only me. Now their privacy setting is set to anyone with the link. So basically it's the same thing. No one's going to get your link unless you share it. Okay, so you can have faith that your projects are not being shared unless you make the actions to actually share the project. Okay, so if I close this here and I close or I click on these three little dots. This is where, if you like, you can edit your project details. So if you wanted to say, add a picture to this. Okay, so it automatically is gonna show what is on your design space canvas. And then if you want it to have like, say I could take a final picture of what this sign looks like, then it would show an extra dot here. And when you click this arrow, it would show you whatever pictures I decided to enhance this little thing here. Now, another thing that they did was before you would have to add a description. Now, the everyone settings no longer requires a project description or a second photo. So I literally could share it just like this if I wanted to. Now granted, it's going to give you a much better, if you're going to share it with the community, you're probably going to want to add all those extra photos and a description. But say I just wanted to share this real quickly with my mom, I might not want to add all of that extra stuff. I just want to get it over to her. So you don't have to add those extra little settings. The other thing is the share icon change. So let me go ahead and go, I'm going to cancel here. So again, just like before, if you want to share it, you can do Facebook, Pinterest, or copy the project link. It copies it to your virtual clipboard in the sky, and then you would either open up an email or open up a messenger or, you know, somehow to get it to somebody else, you would uh, click paste and that link would now go to that person. All right. So this here, let me close this here. So before this would change color, it was like, I think if I remember correctly, it was 
uh, an arrow, I think. And it would change to a color blue if you had shared it. Now there's no longer any uh, dots or colors that changes. It's just super simple. This is the sharing icon and it just stays this whether you've shared it or not. Now what they did do was they enhanced our Cricut profiles. So if you wanna see what projects you have shared, you can go to your profiles tab. And if you forgot where that's at, you go up to the top of your screen where there's a three lines, you click there and you go to view profile. This is my profile here. It shows me these are what they're calling project tiles. Okay, so these are all the projects I've shared, 28 of them. And if I wanted to edit my profile, I would click here, something I should probably do. You can add an about me description and you can change or update your profile photo here. Okay, I'm not gonna do it right now, so I'm gonna click cancel or you can copy your profile link. So if I wanted to say, maybe say I wanted to share all of these projects with one of my girlfriends or something like that, okay? So what I would do is click on copy profile link. When you click on it, you can see nothing happens, right? But it is actually pasted to your clipboard. So let me show you what that looks like. I can bring up a sticky note app that I have right here. And I can go ahead and I'm going to paste, right? Because I've already copied from that profile link. And I'm now going to left click my mouse and then right click and choose paste. Or you could do control or command V. And there is my profile. I can now take this and copy and paste it into an email. And whoever I email this to is going to get every one of these projects that I share with them. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? So those are the two things they did as far as the profiles. All right, so now that pretty much covers everything they did for the update. To get back to your home, click those three little lines again and go to home. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump right into this project so I can also answer the email question once I get the project shared. So let me show you if you want to make this project. It is a combination of using pens and also uh, either cardstock or vinyl. Today we're gonna use vinyl so I can answer that email question and show her how I do it. Um, and this is not a good thing. Oh, okay, here it comes. <laughs> I don't know if Cricut's working on their site right now, but I did check my internet before I hit record and I have really good speed. So we'll just kind of see what goes on here. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and close this just in case. In case you guys run into something like this, this is what I do. I go up to file, or I'm sorry, to view and hit reload. It's just gonna reload my canvas. And we'll see if it works better now. So I'm going to click on this project. And OK, so now it seems to be working fine. I'm going to go ahead and make this project, but I want to show you some things. So instead of just clicking on Make It, I'm going to click on Customize. Now, this is a large file, so it's going to take some time to load. So I'll probably fast forward through this part. That's why you see the message up there. Wow, that's a big project. <laughs> Okay, so I've actually got four designs on here. Let me make my canvas smaller so you can see everything I've, I'm working with here. Okay, so here we go. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so this is the one we're going to make today. I've already made this one. This one on the left here, the upper left side, is a completely drawn project. It's all drawn with pens. And this one here is in case you want to swap out Thanksgiving, either drawn or vinyl, with Friendsgiving, because some people are going to have Friendsgivings and possibly on their patio. So I made this one blank, so it's interchangeable. This one is identical to these two. I just left the Friendsgiving patio off, so you can, this one is for if you're going to do a drawn project like that one or if you want to use cardstock or vinyl like this one, you would use this one, okay? So now for today, I'm going to turn off 
this layer, this layer, and these two layers so that I only have this one left because this is the one I'm going to make today. So in order to find my layers, you can see, like I said, this is a big project. It's got all of this, okay? So what I'm gonna do is click on the upper left corner. I don't want to make this one today. When I highlight it, it highlights it here. I can just turn off the eye. I'm gonna click this one. I don't need it. Same thing, turn off the eye. I'm gonna click this one, I think. Okay, I didn't group them together. So this one here is right here. It's highlighted. Click the eye, click this one, and click the eye. So the only thing that is left is the project that we're going to make today. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back to 75%. I want to move this over so you can see it. All right, so basically this is going to cut out in vinyl. Everything is sized how I want it. I already have the paper, so let me explain why I used a score line here. Is I needed a score line or, or a pretend piece of paper so that I could attach my drawn images right to the virtual paper. So my paper's already cut the size that I want. Basically, I'm using an eight and a half by 11 piece of 65 pound cardstock that's just a plain brown, kind of a pretty parchment. Uh, piece of paper. And I will link the paper down in the description if you want to see um, what I used. In fact, I'll link both that I used for the drawn and for this one today. Anyway, so in order to have it, um, I don't need to cut the paper, right? It's already cut. So I changed the cut line of my paper here to a score line. And I'm not actually going to score it. It's just letting Cricut know where to attach my pen drawings for when I go to make this project. Okay. I hope this makes sense. It'll probably make more sense when you see me working on the project itself. If you have, if this confuses you, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on make it. And you can see it separates my project into score and draw and then cut because this part right here is the vinyl part that I'm going to use today. Okay, so I'm gonna put it back on score and draw. Um, I don't need to change my material size or anything. Everything's good to go. I'm gonna click on continue. One thing I wanna note though is see how this score line is a it's about i measured it it's a quarter of an inch from the top and a quarter of an inch from the left that means i need to line up my eight and a half by 11 piece of paper a quarter inch down from the top and a quarter inch in from the side okay so go ahead and click on continue it's going to connect to my machine and it wants me to choose my materials. I'm going to click Browse All Materials, and I know that cardstock is right here. I'm going to choose 65 pound light cardstock and choose Done. And then for the tools, now this is important. Remember, I said that I'm not going to score anything actually. So if I was to make it just like it's telling me, because right, it knows I have a Cricut Maker, it wants me to load my pen and then my scoring wheel. But I don't want to score my Cricut mat, right? There's no reason to do that. So what I'm going to do is kind of trick the Cricut and I'm going to say, edit my tools. And I'm going to change to the scoring stylus. Now I have a scoring stylus and I could put it in the adapter, but I'm not going to. Um, it doesn't need to. It will just go through the motion of scoring your paper. Okay, so select your scoring, scoring stylus and hit apply. And now it's going to tell me to load my scoring stylus in clamp A. It also lets me know what pins are coming up. And just to let you know, this right here, as far as this project, I selected glitter gel brown pen. It is only showing me brown here. So just so you know, I know that and I've reported it to Cricut. So hopefully in their next update, they can correct it. But it's only recognizing my pen as a brown pen. But I know in my mind to use my glitter gel pen 
you can use whatever pen you decide you want your little turkey to be. So there, I just wanted to point that out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I will meet you over at the maker where we're going to go ahead and load our project. And I'll show you how to apply vinyl to light cardstock, what I use to make it successful every time. And we'll just go through the project and then I will share this project, right? Just like how I showed you sharing it. So if anybody wants to use this project, I will add it to my blog and I will add it to my description and you can use this file and learn how to share your projects as well. Alrighty, so let me go ahead and I'll meet you over at the maker. Okay, so this is how the drawn one looks. I've got Thanksgiving on the patio and it's all drawn out with Cricut ink pens from all of these pen choices right here. And it was super simple. It does take a little bit of time to do the, this is called the Carly sketch font. So it does take a little time doing that, but it turns out really super cute. And again, I will list all these colors that I used in case you want to use the same colors, but you know, this could be made in so many different ways that you would like, right? Choose your own different background paper or your own different inks. All right, so let me just set this aside and I we will do this one. I'm choosing a little bit of a different color piece of paper. These are two of my favorite uh, light cardstock papers. I love this one. It has like little pieces of speckles of colors. Makes really pretty for like greeting cards, things like that, or flyers. All right, so let me just set this aside and we will get busy on this uh, one right here. And it says to load, let me minimize my recording software so I can see what pen to use. Okay, so it's saying to do the scoring stylus, right? But we're not going to. Um, so we're going to let it go ahead and go through that motion, right? It's going to go through the motion of scoring, but it's not really going to score. So I'm just going to load my mat. And the Cricut light is flashing. I'm going to click that. And it's going to go ahead and score, but not actually score the paper. Okay, so now I'm looking at my design space and it's showing me to load my blue pen into clamp a so where my scoring scoring stylus would have been i'm going to load my my cricut pen blue now what i'm doing is i test my colors first because one time i made a project and i didn't do that and a little piece of fuzzy was on it and it ruined my entire project so i don't want to have to do that <laughs> again so there's a little tip for you line up your little arrow here put it down and press go so that's how I'm going to be doing all my pins here and I will fast forward through this part but basically whatever pin it's telling me on design space to load I'm going to test it on the paper load it in my Cricut and let it do its thing okay so just keep an eye on design space and then once we're all done here then the last thing we'll be loading is our vinyl to cut out and then we will apply the vinyl to the project
Okay, so I'm going to take my piece of paper and I'm going to turn my mat over. And this is where you want to carefully peel it back so as not to curl your paper. Okay, and then turn this over. And now we will get to the vinyl part of it. So let me take this pin out real quick. And we'll just leave that like that. Okay. So this is what I do for my vinyl part. Now this is, like I said, it's 65 weight uh, cardstock paper, so it's very light. Uh, now my, if I was to use my regular Cricut transfer tape, and I have done it before, you can do it for the most part. You might get a little bit of sticking. I have done it and not had any, but it's kind of a hit or miss. I came upon this transfer tape. So for me, it's kind of like some transfer tapes work for this type of project and some transfer tapes work better for another type of project. This would be the type of transfer tape that I like for a lightweight cardstock, okay? Because it's, it's sticky, but it's not as sticky. So another way you could do that if you didn't want to buy a completely new cardstock is you could take your Cricut cards or uh, not cardstock, but you could take your transfer tape, whatever kind you use, and if it's too sticky, just put it like on a clean t-shirt or a pair of jeans and, you know, do it up and down, up and down until there's less stickiness to that transfer tape or, or transfer paper. So for this here, I like this for light type use projects rather than um, use my Cricut transfer tape, okay? So basically you're going to cut it out right, your vinyl, put it on your Cricut mat. We can get those pieces cut, but to save time, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward like I've already laid down my Cricut vinyl and run it through my mats, okay? So here I have applied my vinyl that's already been cut out. I've taken it off of the Cricut mat. I have put my transfer pieces on top and cut around it so now it is ready to apply on my project okay so basically I'm at the point where I've already weeded my my words out I've added my transfer paper on top of it now I'm ready to take it off of the transfer paper and put it onto my paper project okay so in order to do that right I've already taken this or actually I haven't done this part yet you want to take your squeegee here and you just want to rub it down really, really good. And I mean really good because since this isn't as sticky, it's going to have the tendency to have the transfer paper um, not stick as well to the vinyl words like you're used to. Okay, so I would go ahead and definitely do the back as well. Just get it really in here. Get all these pieces of this letter just squished down there really well. And sometimes I find that I might even have to kind of get it going by peeling part of the letter up with it. See how it, it almost didn't want to peel up, but it actually is sticking. Okay, so I know I'm going to want to line this up right about here. This goes right in between there. Okay, so basically I'm going to peel this back. So far, it's doing well. If any of it starts to stick to here, I can put it back down and press down again. But so far, we've got good. Okay, that one right there is a little bit. And I could do it a little bit at a time, but this piece, I want to just go ahead and do the whole thing. There we go. Okay, so we've got the whole piece here. I'm going to just, and I like it because this is kind of clear. I can see where it's going. I'm going to line it up exactly how I want it. Right about there. And this is where I'm not, I'm going to press down, but I'm not going to press down too hard. Just enough for those vinyl letters to stick but not, you know, put too much of that transfer tape pressure down. And then I'm just going to simply peel back that transfer tape. And because it's not that sticky, right, and I didn't press that hard, 
it's not going to stick to our beautiful paper. So just peel it back. Just go a little bit at a time. Go kind of slow on this one, right? You don't want to hurt your paper. You don't want to rush it. You just want to kind of let it do its job. Just peel it back nice and slow. If you were to peel it back super fast, you might get some tearing of the paper. Oops, see, my dot started to come up, so I'm just going to press it down a little bit and come back, peel it again. It's going well. My little bit of my V started to come up. I just pressed it lightly with my finger. I'm going to just do a couple more here just in case. And there we go. Clara, I hope that helps answer your question. Let me go ahead and do the patio word so you can see that one in action. So I'm going to go ahead and do the back of this. Right. What I'm trying to do is make sure that these letters are getting pressed onto the transfer tape instead of this paper part of the vinyl. Okay, so I'm going to see if the P is ready to peel off, and it is. It's coming off onto the transfer tape, which is what we want. Now that one is starting to stick. So I'm going to take it and rub it just a little bit more. Peel it back. Okay, it's doing well. I've got an I and an O left. See if the O is coming off. All right, see, that's perfect. It's just how I wanted it. I'm going to take it and place it where I want on my paper. Right about there. I'm just going to lightly put it onto the paper. Okay, I'm going to take a corner of it and just start peeling it back. Notice how I'm not peeling up this way. I'm kind of peeling it back almost at a level angle. I'm doing it slow, not too fast, so as not to tear the paper. That started to peel up, so I just pushed it down with my finger. And there we go. So that made all the difference in the world of using this lighter type less it less sticky adhesive transfer tape and we've got absolutely no tearing on this project whatsoever and we've now were able to put permanent vinyl onto a light cardstock and that gives the project a nice added dimension instead of having it all drawn you've got kind of a a dual media item there and so let me grab the other one We've got this one and we've got the vinyl one. So I think that gives it a cute, a cute difference, right, in the project. All right, so there you have it. I will be sure to share this project with you. It will be down in the description below, and it will also be on my blog. Either place you can get the link. You don't have to sign up for email or anything. Just come to my blog or get it from down below. And you can make this sign either a Thanksgiving on the patio, six turkeys apart, hashtag grateful, or you can do the Friendsgiving on the patio, six turkeys apart, hashtag grateful. All right, you guys all have a happy Thanksgiving and a happy Friendsgiving and stay healthy. Bye.